Hello and welcome to Kirby SQL Talk. Today we're going to wrap up building a failover cluster instance in Azure. Um, just as a review, what we've done so far, we've we've built a Windows Server failover cluster. Uh, we've built the failover cluster instance uh, using SIOS Data Keeper uh, to keep the two drives in sync. Uh, but uh, what we need to do now is create an internal load balancer. And that allows in uh, Azure, allows us to talk to the virtual uh, SQL cluster name. So how do we do that? Let's switch over to Azure to do that. And what you're gonna wanna do is click the new button. Then under networking, I'm gonna scroll down and pick a load balancer. So this is a couple step process. Let's just call it SQL in ILB for internal load balancer. You can call it anything you want. We're gonna make the scheme internal. Choose the virtual network or VNet that you've been working with at this point. Subnet, we're gonna pick the default. And then we're gonna to wanna to give it a static IP address. And what we gave this um, in our cluster was 10.1.0.200. Um, we're gonna use an existing resource group. It's just a, a way to keep things logically organized. And we're gonna pin that to the dashboard. So let's go ahead and click create. This is um, just the first step and we're gonna come back and make some configuration changes. Okay, the internal load balancer is created. Now I'd just like to clean up the dashboard a little bit. So we'll say edit dashboard and we'll drag this over here. And that way it's just kind of organized in a way that's easy to see what it's doing. We've got our domain controller and our FCI virtual machines over here. And then this other virtual machine that's gonna be our availability group um, uh, standalone instance. So let's go into the internal load balancer that we just created. And step one is we're going to create a backend pool. So scroll down here, click backend pool. And this backend pool is going to contain a list of servers that are going to be behind, be behind this uh, load balancer. Um, so click add. We'll just give it a name, BE for backend pool. And we're going to add virtual machines to it. In order to do that, we're gonna pick the availability set that we're working with, which will come up. So we're gonna pick the Kirby avail set. Then we're allowed to pick the virtual machines uh, that are, um, that we're gonna have as part of this. So we'll click uh, the two SQL FCI 1 and FCI 2, those are both candidates that are going to work for us. So we click select, click OK, and then click OK, and that'll start creating the, the backend pool. Okay, our backend pool has been created. You can see the two virtual machines uh, in the parentheses. So let's um, close down that blade. And now what we need to do is create a health probe. We do that by clicking the probe um, option and the plus button. So let's call this uh, probe. I think I've got a few others out there. So I'm going to call this probe eight, uh, make it TCP and then leave it at port 80. This is the number of, this is the interval. This is the number of seconds, amount of time between probe attempts and then the unhealthy threshold uh, you can leave as two. Uh, this is the number of consecutive probe failures that must occur before a VM is considered unhealthy. So let's click OK on that. OK, our probe has been created, so we can close down that pane, or that blade. OK, and the final step is to create a load balancing rule. And this will use the probe, actually, that we just created. So we're going to add. We can just call this SQL, and we're going to intercept port 1433, which is the default uh, for SQL, and everything else should be fine the way it is. We'll click OK. OK, the load balancing rule has been set up, and you can see that it's configured to use the probe that we just created.
Okay, as a final step in this process, we need to run a PowerShell script and run that from the primary node of your failover cluster instance. So I already have that running over here, and this is a failover cluster manager. And you're going to need to grab a couple properties uh, in order to create this script. So first of all, we're looking for the cluster network name. Just click on the networks here, right click on the cluster network name, go to properties, and you'll see it's called cluster network one as defined there. So you're going to capture that string. And the other thing you're going to need to know is the uh, the name uh, uh, the resource name. So click roles. Click on the primary role, role there, and down under server name, uh, this may be collapsed like that. So we'll open it up, and then right click and go to properties of the server address. This is the second string that you're going to need to do, need to grab. So we're going to copy that, and I'll show you what that script looks like now. Okay, here's the script that we're going to run. We have put the cluster network name here. We have put the resource name and we have put the uh, service IP address. This is the, the cluster IP address as we've defined it. So before you can run it in PowerShell, you want to make sure that you download the Azure PowerShell um, to your server. I've already logged into the account and I'm about to run the script. At the end, when it's finished, it gives you a warning and it said that the properties were stored, but they won't take effect until the IP address is uh, brought offline and then brought online again. So to do that, let's bring over the cluster manager, bring up the cluster manager. We'll click the cluster name here and down on server name, open that up and take the address offline. And then bring back online. And at that point, you should be done. done. And uh, you'll want to make sure that you have any firewall rules, uh, exceptions set up. And um, at that point, you should be able to use the internal load balancer to connect to your failover cluster instance. When the cluster is down, so let's right click and bring that online so everything's green and online. Give that just a minute. There we go. Okay, before we wrap up the video, I just want to show you one correction to the internal load balancer. Um, when you create your load balancing rules. I didn't do this the first time, so I went back and uh, deleted and recreated the load balancing rule. You should make the floating IP enabled. Uh, once you've done that, that should work fine. So thanks for watching, and we will talk to you next time.